Hi everybody. Um, what is the first Christian book you read? Well, for me, it was the uh, Sacred Diary of Adrian Plass. Um, not a great book. Well, actually, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Okay, uh, okay. What was the first Christian book you read? What about this then? What was the first Christian book you read that really changed you? That really changed you? Well, for me, it was this. Tortured for Christ by Richard Wurmbrand. Tortured for Christ by Richard Wurmbrand. If you haven't read it, read it. It is life transforming. Um, it is the personal account of Richard Wurmbrand, who was imprisoned for his faith um, under the Soviet uh, system. And it talks about horrendous things that happened to him, that happened to others and happened to their families when they went into prison and were martyred. And it was um, the book really that opened my eyes um, to the fact that not every nation is like the UK where we have freedom of religion. Um, and that actually throughout history there have been times of severe persecution. And this is nothing new to the kind of 20th century. This has happened all the way through um, church history. Interestingly, it happened even in the times of Jesus, people being persecuted for their faith. And in the times of the New Testament, even Paul um, was a persecutor of the faith whilst he was sore and, and unconverted. And a passage that often comes to mind when I think about the persecuted church is Matthew 25. Let me just get my uh, Bible. Matthew 25 um, is a passage where Jesus is speaking. He's speaking uh, judgment, preparing people for the judgment uh, to come. And he says this in Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. What a great day that will be. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was ill, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Now, I think this passage is applied in, in lots of different ways. It's um, applied in terms of social action and helping people in poverty. It's applied in terms of loving other Christians. But I do think there is a particular application that was intended by Jesus when he talks about these little ones and those in prison um, that actually um, these are people who are suffering for the faith. These are people who are being put in prison. And so it seems to me that in the heart of God, there is a special place for those who are persecuted. And actually, if you read the book of Revelation, you see that clearly. We see the prayers of the saints, of the martyrs going up. We see those who have been slain for the faith, in, in, in a sense, in a special place in, in heaven. And surely that's right, isn't it? There's a sense in which when I get to heaven, um, I'm expecting to see others with greater crowns than mine, far greater crowns than mine. I think all of you will have far greater crowns than mine because I get thanked for my faith all the time and have an easy life. But those that died in the killing fields of Cambodia, those who died in persecutions across the centuries, I think those who stood for the faith didn't deny the Lord, they'll be up front, won't they, with their crowns. The Lord loves those who are martyred. The Lord loves the persecuted Christian. And we too should be praying for them. So today, let's pray for persecuted Christians. Now, below in the description, I'm going to put some links to some websites um, that you can go and you can find out more details and you can pray. Um, but our heart should be praying for those who are being smashed or squeezed for the faith. And we should pray that the Lord would keep them even in those situations.